Hello everyone, I'm Sarah and welcome back to my channel. I've been working on a little something something, a little secret project that uh, I am here to share with all of you now that it has finally arrived. I recently completed the 1991 challenge where I wrote for 90 minutes a day for 90 days in a row focusing on one project. That project was uh, something that I've been working on on and off since last January, I believe it was. Uh, YA slash NA, I guess, dark academia fantasy called Bird Whistle House. And the way that I had this in my head, I knew that I needed to outline it, plot it, characters, everything perfectly, like, maybe not perfectly, but really, really well in order for the story to be coherent and not be an absolute mess by the time I was done. So the revision process would be slightly easier. And I thought I'd actually done quite an okay job with doing this. Um, as I was writing Bird Whistle House over those 90 days, I, I realised that actually no, I had not done as good of a job as I, I thought I had at all. And it really opened my eyes to some of the weaknesses that I have with my writing process that I sort of knew existed, but now they basically just came and slapped me across the face. Like this was, I can't continue to, to work like this, like I have been doing, which is basically half arsing everything. Because it doesn't work for me in the long run, it doesn't work for me in the future. And since getting my ADHD diagnosis, I've been a bit more aware of how my brain is working while I am doing these drafts. And I'm already trying to counter things like my motivation, um, my focus and inspiration and uh, motivation on a specific project for multiple, multiple days and weeks in a row because I struggle with that. I'm already sort of trying to figure out how to get myself to do some work when my brain does not want to do work or when I'm stressed or tired from work. That's a work in progress-ish. Um, but, th but then I realized I sort of, need something i need a system i need a way to help me while i am outlining while i am writing that is not going to screw me up in the future because my brain works in this specific way my undiagnosed autism loves structure it loves routine it loves knowing what's going to come next because then it makes it easy my raging adhd would rather set itself on fire than follow any sort of structure, any sort of outline. Because where's the fun? Where's the excitement? Where's the spontaneity? It sucks all the fun out of writing. So these two sides are constantly at war. I will try to do an outline. I'll get bored. I will try to follow the outline, but because I haven't done a good job with the outline, there's a lot of missing elements. So my brain makes up things uh, character past, plot points, subplots, as it goes, filling in all of the blanks in the outline. And th then we come to the trouble of, of plot holes and inconsistencies and subplots appearing out of nowhere uh, that don't end. And it's too much hard work for my brain to then sit there and go, yeah, let's fix all of this because that is work. And it makes me go, oh, I haven't done a good job at this. I don't want to continue this. This is too difficult. And then I just don't do it. So it really forced me to sort of sit back and think, what is the best way for me to appeal to both my undiagnosed autism and my need for an outline, but also appeal to my ADHD and the need to do whatever the hell I want, regardless of what I need to do. And thus my secret project was born. Would you believe me if I told you that this started off as an idea to make a series Bible for my newest project, Project Grey? Because that's how it started. I was like, right, if I'm going to do Project Grey, which is a trilogy, I want to make sure that everything, every, that everything world building wise at least, has been set up and that I know sort of what that is. And I can sort of keep track of what goes on and what we learn in book one, book two, book three standard typical series bible stuff right um and then my uh dopamine flew a little bit too close to the sun and um and it made this my project creation folder 
I guess, workbook, sort of, it came up with, with this, which is so much more than world building. It is not only world building, it is character, it is plot, it is outlines, it is timelines. It is a whole new ass plot structure that I sort of came up with to cater to my needs and what I need when I'm trying to outline something because a lot of the time a lot of the other um, plot structures like uh, the three act method and save the cat are good but they're not enough. So let's get into my project creation folder I guess which started out as a series bible and now is going to be used for every single project I have because that is the type of person that I am always overdoing things and then never following through we're going to follow through right um we start with world building as you can see we do have the lovely honeymoon method or the traffic light system going on here red orange and green and depending on how i'm feeling when i am doing the world building will depend on which of these i do so red is just red the very basics of what i'm going to need if i'm feeling in a better mood i will do red and then include orange and then if I'm feeling my absolute best, I can then come and do everything on the page and that would be green for good, better and best world building. And the purpose with this is if I'm feeling awful, I can start with red, but then along the line, I can go back to it and add any of these I need to before the writing process. Or if my ADHD brain thinks of something on a whim that I have not already included in the orange and the green, I can then come and I can include it and it will be canon and I will have a record of it. So then it's not so much of a, oh no, I've added stuff and now I don't know what I'm doing sort of thing while I'm doing my actual writing. Now these are um, very specifically for Project Grey itself. I made it, I made it look pretty, but we'll come to my blank one and this is everything that I'm going to be writing down and noting for everything for world building so government and politics law and order architecture etc etc and then we've got a second page which is more in-depth biome season science technology etc etc and obviously these aren't color coded on these pages mostly because I have it color coded here but I would add what I need to add depending on which part of the world building I am doing and there is space for me to add if I haven't previously planned it so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. And then we come to magic system, which is color coded, red abilities and method, orange limits and cost, and history and culture, green. And again, I need these two as an absolute minimum in order to start writing. And I can do these before I need to, or I could add them as I am doing the writing to keep track of what I am doing. And again, we have very specifically for um, my uh, new project. And then we come to the timeline, which we'll go to this blank one first. I suck at keeping track of the timeline. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I don't know anything. I can never keep track. And the amount of times I've had to scroll through my novel and go, right, that's Monday, that's Monday, that's Monday. That's Tuesday afternoon, which makes this Wednesday. So that's Thursday, but then there's not enough time. I no. So we have a timeline, a blank timeline, in which we can fill it out sort of like this, main events, and then um, I suppose the day that it happened, the time that it happened, so I can keep track of everything I'm doing. And this is for specifically outlining, so I know how long everything has been, when it has been, how long it has been. That didn't make sense. And we've got my character toolbox in here as well. Again, the red, orange and green. These are the basics that I'm going to need in order to create my characters, which is their want, their need, their lie, their ghost, their core value. Uh, I haven't written it, but three positive traits and two negative traits. And then depending on how I'm feeling, I could add more depth. And then if I'm feeling absolutely fantastic, I can again add more depth. And with the character toolbox, I would prefer these done before I started writing. But there are some things that I might, you know, have in my head as I'm writing that I haven't thought of before I start writing. And again, I can add them here if absolutely necessary. And there should be a part two to the character toolbox, which for some reason is not in my folder, but I have spares. Um, and again, the basics I'm going to need, their family and relationships and their education. 
and then it gets more and more in depth about quirks, fears, talents, memories, their history. Everything that I have about the characters is going to be on these pages. And again, if there is anything that pops up in my head while I'm writing about their history, I can add it there. If there's anything about their quirks or their fears or their talents that I happen to think of, I can write it in here so I can keep track of it. And then a few little other things, keeping track of all the minor characters that I have, the role that they play, how they affect the plot, if they give any information and who they give the information to. Again, just so I can keep track of my minor characters and their names in case I need to refer back to them without having to scroll through my entire novel. We have a very basic plot toolbox, which is just what I need to keep in mind while I'm creating my plot and doing the outline itself. Again, this is based on the fantastic writers of Arcane and how they managed to outline and plot um, Arcane, the most amazing show in the world. Seriously, go watch it. So that is something that is just in there for reference. We have my new plot structure, which I'm going to skip right past because we don't need to know any of that now. More of the plot structure that I have. Again, let's skippy skip skip. We have this page here, which basically the plot structure, um, but so I can keep track, book one, book two, book three, of all of the major things that happen across all of it as one whole trilogy and then also individually as their own separate books. And then we have exactly the same here, except this is me charting my character arcs for all of my characters. This is Project Grey specific. So we've got one, two, three, four, five characters and where their character arc is throughout the entirety of the three novels, book one, book two, and book three. Again, specific. And then we have my outlining toolbox, which is the most important thing in the world. This is what I need to reference when I am actually doing my outlining. So we have again, red, orange, green. At minimum, I'll need 100 words for each of the chapters I outline and the main purpose of that chapter and then we move into the orange, which has an additional 200 words and includes any information that they need to receive in the outline. And then we move on to the green, which includes an extra 500 words and um, what happens with specific characters that we learn and what happens with any role building that we learn. And again, it's all kept nice and neat. And then we have this lovely little page as well. So the purpose, the information, the character, that's where that is, and the world building, and these are everything that I would need to include in the outline to keep myself on track. And then this is just a little how I want my scenes to go. Each scene needs a goal, a conflict, a disaster, and then each sequel, so the next scene needs a reaction, a dilemma, and a decision, which I suppose will help me plotting out the events and everything that I need to plot out to. This is my fun little thing, my plotted and pantsed page. This is specifically for the chapters. So I'm going to keep note of everything that I have plotted for every single one of the chapters and the main points. And then as I'm writing, if I pants anything, if I add any other information, that's going to be written down here. So again, it, to keep track of what I have added on a whim with my ADHD and what I have already plotted, and then we can sort of put it where it needs to go in the rest of the book and I can adjust my outline and my characters and everything as I go writing the first draft. So everything is where it needs to be at all times. Here are all of the subplots that I'm gonna have so I can keep track of all of my subplots. What it is, um, when it starts, when it ends, every single time we have a chapter related to that subplot, is going to be noted down here so I can keep track of how they ebb and flow, where they start, where they end. I can see if we've not focused on a specific subplot for a character for very long, which means I would need to go back and add more subplot details into previous chapters. And then questions I need to answer. If I have anything that pops up that doesn't have an answer in the book, they, they are written here. And this is, I suppose, more for revision. So this is something I can refer to for revision specifically. I've asked this question, I haven't answered it. I need to put that answer in the book somewhere that will help me with dealing with that. And then things that happen behind the scenes. So because if I have multiple characters, some characters are gonna learn some things and know some things before other characters. So this is just gonna be a, this is a person, this is what they learn, 
during this chapter, but we don't see them learn it. So it's going to help with their depth and what they do and how they act because they know a piece of information that everyone else does not. Again, it's just to keep everything in order. And then again, more behind the scenes there. And then we get to this lovely little thing right at the end, um, which is what I'm going to use for revisions. So each of them has a uh, chapter. This is what happens in the chapter. And these boxes, and if I can find my piece of paper, I can show you exactly what I'm going to do with that. That is going to be this, a scene by scene. So every element that I would have in regards to a um, the plot is here. Plot, character, subplot, antagonist, magic system. And basically all I did was go through and I highlighted the main purpose or the main point or the main focus that I had of those chapters and then any um, secondary or main points I had here so I can see just by looking where I focus more on plot stuff where it was mostly character where the antagonist pops up so when I'm doing revisions I can adjust and add more antagonist um, take away more character and focus more on plot focus more on the magic system so it doesn't look so all of this pink all of this so that is my project creation folder. Can you see how overboard I went? Because I certainly do. I am really excited to start getting to work with my project creation folder. I'm going to start with of Stars of Smoke and Other Intangible Things and my little scene by scene at the end as I start my rereads through that in order to prep. And then I'm going to use it for Project Grey with the aim of having everything in that book basically filled out so I can start writing in November unofficially for NaNoWriMo. So over the next couple of months, I'm going to be going through everything in the project creation book with you guys so you can see firsthand how I feel it works in order to get everything set up so we can talk about everything in more detail so you can sort of see how I am making it work. And so you can find out if it is actually something that does work for me, which will culminate in me outlining everything, hopefully in October, using my lovely new plot structure that I have, which I'll do a different video about at a later date, and then writing it in November. I'm going to start getting this set up with all of my different projects and all of the elements that are going to be going into those different projects. I'll start to smoke and other intangible things, and so we cover it, Bird Whistle House and Project Grey all going to be in here so excited and hopefully this is going to be a very big step forward in working with and managing my ADHD into and creating a much smoother organized and well thought out writing process from brainstorming to outlining and beyond wish me luck thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video bye